The focus of this video is incisional hernia. We will find out what it is, what are the symptoms, what investigations are required, and the treatment. Here in the cartoon, you can see some of the incisions that surgeons have to make to be able to operate. These can be longitudinal, as in the midline or next to the midline, or transverse that go across the abdomen. The minimally invasive surgery requires smaller incisions to be made, but these also are prone to weakness. An incisional hernia is a weakness in the scar of the incision made to be able to do the operation. This weakness then gives way and allows the inside of the abdomen to protrude out and thus stretching the skin and the covering layers which come with it forming a bulge. In this example we can see the small bowel which is traversing. Now let's look at some of the real world examples of incisional hernia. This is the midline scar and you can see the bulge forming. This is, this is a smaller example of the same and this is an incisional hernia much larger in size in a transverse incision. Initially after an operation a bulge may appear which may not have any symptoms at all. However as time progresses it may get bigger and become painful. This pain is particularly worse after after exercise or activities that increase the abdominal pressure such as constipation or difficulty in passing urine. The hernia or the sac may become incarcerated that is it no longer goes back inside which it tends to do in the beginning so when the patient lies down the lump disappears however if scar tissue forms then the lump may not go back inside and if there is bowel inside it is prone to obstruction. Finally hernias may strangulate if the exit site called the neck of the hernia gets tight to a point where it causes the blood supply of the bowel or whatever is inside the hernia to be lost thus resulting in gangrene which is a life-threatening complication. Other than this of course the hernia is an unsightly bulge and often shows through the clothes and stops the patient from enjoying life and taking part in normal activities such as sport and exercise. The most useful investigation for larger hernias is a CT scan. It shows the size of the defect as seen over here, the amount of abdominal contents that are now in the hernial sac. Anything more than 20 to 30 percent causes significant challenge. It also gives information about the quality of the abdominal wall, specifically the muscles and the tendons and details of previous repairs such as a mesh. A CT assessment is now invaluable in planning repair of complex hernias. This is a condition called diverification of the recti in which the two midline muscles are separated by elongation of the tissue that binds the two together. This is common in middle-aged and older males as well as young females after pregnancy. This is not a true hernia but sometimes it can coexist with other forms of hernia including incisional hernia. In terms of prevention it is important to control the risk factors wherever possible. These can be patient related or these can be technical. Patients who are at high risk of incisional hernia are those who are obese, especially those with a BMI of greater than 33. Patients with diabetes, especially those with poorly controlled diabetes. Smoking is associated with a high risk of incisional hernia, malnutrition and immunosuppression. There are also technical factors of which wound infection is primary and it is incumbent on the surgeons to take every precaution to prevent a wound infection. Certain techniques have been associated with a low risk of incisional hernia and surgeons ought to pursue those. There are certain types of surgery that are associated with a high risk of incisional hernia. It is important to tailor the treatment according to the condition, thus assessing the symptoms and the fitness of the patient as well as the ability to control the risk factors in particular obesity, smoking and diabetes. Assess of the extent of the procedure required according to the hernia and finally making a value judgment on whether or not patients are completely unfit for any kind of intervention. It is this group of unfit patients for whom it is important to maintain their quality of life and to counsel them about reducing the kind of activities that increases their intraabdominal pressure such as prevention of constipation, improvement of flow of urine in older males from prostate related conditions and counseling them about not lifting too heavy a weight. Some patients who are not fit for operative intervention or who are waiting for an operation may find some benefit in the use of belts that has a puck or a soft cushion that pushes the hernia back inside and holds it in place when the patient is up and about. This has its own limitations such as heat, discomfort, grazing of the skin and quite frequently being ineffective. A long-lasting repair of an incisional hernia is dependent upon certain principles, primarily repairing the defect without tension and then supplementing the repair with use of a mesh which is artificial material that invites scar tissue to form thus reinforces the area and stops the hernia from recurring. 
There are a wide variety of meshes available, including some that are made from biologic agents. This operation can be performed through the open route as seen over here, or through the keyhole laparoscopic or robotic route, where a hernia is evident over there which has been repaired with suture and then reinforced with a mesh from the inside. All steps should be taken to prevent infection and to allow the mesh to settle and for healing to take place over the succeeding few weeks. For patients with really large incisional hernias, where the defects may be 7 cm or greater, or 20 to 30 percent of their inside contents are hanging outside, these patients pose a specific challenge. It is important that specialist surgeons who have an interest in repair of complex hernias undertake these procedures, and these are performed in institutions that are backed up to offer specialist care when required. Frequently these days, Botox injections are used on each side, causing relaxation of the abdominal muscles to allow the midline to return towards the center. Surgeons also deploy a technique called component separation that separates the layers of the abdominal wall on the side, allowing the center to slide towards the middle so that a tension-free repair can be performed and then supported by a large mesh which overlaps the defect at least by 5 centimeters on each side, which is the principle of hernia repair. In this cartoon, you can see the, a non-tension repair in the middle of the incisional hernia, which is reinforced by a mesh. The risks include the complications from the medical condition that the patient may be suffering from previously or from the anesthetic itself. Surgeons ought to take every precaution to prevent infection because this increases the risk of recurrence of the hernia. Rarely, hematoma or bleeding may occur at sites where dissection has taken place. If bowel is adherent or previous mesh has been used, or well, there are adhesions from the previous operation, there's a risk of visceral injury dependent on the site, such as bowel or bladder. If the repair requires putting back intra-abdominal contents and then closing the abdomen with a lot of force, then the pressure within the abdomen may rise unacceptably, making it difficult for the patient to breathe or for the blood to return safely to the heart, thus causing complications. Unfortunately, there is always a risk of recurrence after a seemingly successful operation, and this may be as high as 10 to 15%. This completes an overview of this topic. Please do like and subscribe. If you have any comments, please do share.